Each and every year, the Prefontaine Classic is one of the most highly anticipated track and field meets that takes place around the world. This year was absolutely no exception. Within the Prefontaine Classic, one of the most highly anticipated races is the Men's Mile because it draws some of the best athletes from all around the world and it's a stacked field which is often a flip of the coin to see who will win. On the start line we saw Olympic 1500 metre champion Jakob Ingebrigtsen, Olympic silver medalist from Kenya Timothy Chariot, Abel Kipsang, Oliver Hoare Olympic finalist from Australia and high schooler Colin Salman who was having a crack at Alan Webb's high school record of 3 minutes and 53 seconds. While on the broadcast, the weather appeared to be perfect for running fast, we noticed that the pack gradually tightened as they came into the home straight, which often suggests there could be a bit of a headwind. Post-race, Inga Brixen confirmed that there was in fact a headwind, which I think was one of the factors that ruled out this race being incredibly fast by the standards that these athletes are capable of. However, in saying that, we still had Chris Sawinski, who is one of the best pacemakers in the world, taking these athletes through the first lap in 55 seconds. The beauty with a pacemaker is not only does it take a little bit of the pressure off the athletes to have to navigate how fast they're running, if you position yourself well, it can also serve as a little bit of a wind block to the athletes tucked in right behind you. As the athletes went through the first lap in just over 55 seconds, Inga Brixton, Chariot, Kipsang, and a number of the other athletes we're expecting to be right up the front were exactly where we found them. The second lap was a bit of a jostle where athletes were trying to find their position and only a couple of athletes really seemed to want to go with the pace that Sawinski was laying down. With two laps to go, Sawinski pulled out and Ingebrigtsen was in a world of his own. Though front running is not uncommon for him, it certainly turns up the pressure if you're not having the best day of your life. Over the next couple of hundred metres, we see Ingebrigtsen gradually looking around to see where the other athletes in the field are placed to get a bit of an idea of what was required of him going into the last few hundred metres. A note for athletes both young and old is the technical brilliance of an athlete like Jakob Ingebrigtsen. Though in the middle distance running scene, technique is often overlooked, if not ignored, I think an athlete like Ingebrigtsen can highlight the importance, first and foremost, the pressure, the headwind, the pace, the expectation that was on his shoulders can all be factors that lead to an athlete tensing up through the jaw, through the neck, through the shoulders, through the arms, and using their energy in a way which is not only ineffective, but slows them right down. Ingebrigtsen, however, is relaxed through all of those areas. He's got a light forward lean, his shoulders are relaxed, his arms are relaxed, and you can see through the ease which he looks around at where the field is, there's not too much tension throughout his torso. With 450 metres to go, it was well and truly clear that Ingebrigtsen was in this race alone. If he was going to win, he was going to have to run away from the rest of the field, and run away he did. With 350 metres remaining, Ingebrigtsen got those arms swinging a little bit harder and gradually tightened the screws on the rest of the field. The confidence that Jakob felt in this part of the race was made clear when no athlete even attempted to go with him and seemingly were happy to fight for second place. With 150 metres to go, the lead that Inga Brixen had opened over the last couple of hundred metres was still in place and the battle was well and truly on for second place amongst Timothy Sherriot, Abel Kipsang, but Oliver Hoare, the Australian Olympic finalist over 1500, ran past both of them with about 40 metres to go to take second place. A notable mention goes to Colin Salman, who, while he didn't crack Alan Webb's high school record of 3 minutes and 53 seconds, still laid down a bloody strong performance, running a personal best time of 3 minutes and 56 seconds. While it was a quality field with every athlete breaking the four minute barrier, I think the headwind and the way the race was run tactically led to a number of athletes not running quite as fast as what they're well and truly capable of on the best day, in the best conditions, in the best tactics. With only five weeks to go until the World Championships taking place at the same track here in Eugene, there's a number of athletes who'll be battling for the gold medal over the 1500 meters, but none, I don't think, are up to the quality of competition and performance as Jakob Ingebrigtsen. So I'm gonna lock him in as the favorite for the men's 1500 meters and then get very close to doubling as he confirmed post-race that he'd be attempting the 1500 meter, 5000 meter double. 
I'd love to know in the comments below who you think will win these races. Is any athlete capable of running against the likes of Jakob Ingebrigtsen? And a bigger question, is Jakob Ingebrigtsen capable of breaking the men's 1500 meter or mile world record this year? Let us know in the comments below.